This is an absurd amount of hot glue. What, what am I going to do with all of this? Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. I use hot glue from time to time, not nearly as much as my buddy Scotty over at the DM Craft, but it is an integral part of my workshop. So when Sherbonder reached out to me and asked if they could send me some supplies and sponsor a video, I jumped on the opportunity. Don't tell them, but I had actually already been planning on switching out my guns for theirs for a while. It's our secret. Their guns are higher quality than the ones I was previously using. Specifically, they have a 30 minute auto off feature. The ones I was using previously have an on off switch, which is great, but I've definitely accidentally left them on when not home or going to bed. And that's always made me super nervous. The auto off protects against my own negligence. They have a lot of different models, but I chose the ones that were dual temperature as it's nice to have that control when working with different materials. Most importantly, they're bright green and black and that totally matches my channel. I was brainstorming what I could build that would really make good use of all these new glue guns. I wanted something that would showcase them obviously, but also something that would give me a good chance to get to know them, their features, and feel them out. So after a while, I landed on D&D Spell Effects. I started flipping through my player's handbook to select some good candidates for building. My old falling apart handbook, which I figured I might as well try to fix with the hot glue while I had them both out. It actually worked pretty good. Not sure how long it's gonna hold up, but good enough for now. I wanted to make five spell effects and I wanted them to each be somewhat different and ones that were likely to get used in game. I specifically looked at all the spells that had durations that would remain on the table for multiple turns. I also wanted these to be easy and fast builds, the kind of things that you could bang out the day of your game last minute. Nothing too fancy, just useful stuff. There is no reason to craft effects for spells that are instantaneous and go away immediately. First up was Everd's Black Tentacles. Squirming ebony tentacles fill a 20 foot square on the ground that you can see within range. For the duration, these tentacles turn the ground in the area into difficult terrain. When a creature enters the affected area, the creature must succeed a dexterity saving throw or take 3d6 bludgeoning damage and be restrained by the tentacles until the spell ends. For this, I used black hot glue. This is totally not required. It could be done with regular hot glue and then spray painted black, but this will make them more durable and gives a really nice wet look without having to add a gloss coat. I used a piece of parchment paper over my cutting mat. Parchment paper specifically, not wax paper. This allowed me to see the one inch grid beneath to act as a guide. I also used my carpenter square to hold it down and further give me some guidance for the shape. Because these are spell effects, they need to be fairly accurate in their sizing, unlike other game items that can be more abstract. Because this spell effect is a 20 foot square in game, it is represented by a 4 inch square on the table. Using the hot glue, I traced out the perimeter. Then I created random squiggly lines, paying special attention to make sure every line began and ended attached to another point. This would make the overall piece more secure and durable. I made multiple passes over the lines to build up their thickness. Again, this was to make them stronger. To represent the tendrils that restrained creatures, I created some vertical ones. This is easily done by drawing some hot glue shapes in a glass of cold water. The water instantly cools and hardens the glue in the desired shape. The advantage of doing this in water versus on the parchment paper is that it keeps the hot glue round rather than flat on one side. These tendrils could then be glued to the spell base anywhere I wanted them. I didn't use too many as it's important that miniatures could still occupy most of the space. This is probably the easiest of the five builds and arguably the one that best represents the actual spell. Entangle. Grasping weeds and vines sprout from the ground in a 20 foot square. For the duration, these plants turn the ground in the area into difficult terrain. A creature in the area must succeed on a strength saving throw or be restrained by the plants. This one started out in a very similar fashion, again with a four inch square of hot glue. This time though, I just used regular clear hot glue. I also made the coverage a lot more dense and the lines much wider. In order to give these a vine-like appearance, I wanted to cover them in green flocking. A quick way to do this would be a simple coat of green paint, but the flocking will give it a much nicer appearance. 
You could use PVA or Mod Podge or any number of glues to apply the flocking, but I opted for my favorite Super 77 spray adhesive as I really like how quickly it holds. Once covered in glue, it was just a matter of shaking on some green flocking of the desired shades, and then the excess could be shaken off and repurposed. I wanted to really make sure the flocking was well secured and durable. I hate it when it sheds on other terrain. The best way to do this is by totally saturating the flock in watered down PVA, Mod Podge, or Scenic Cement. I actually have some liquid spray Mod Podge that I've never used. It seemed perfectly suited for this task, so I gave it a go, and it worked really well. But again, you could just dilute regular glue or Mod Podge for this purpose. After drying, the piece was complete and could be thrown on the game table without worrying about it shedding annoying green bits all over the place. Flaming Sphere! A five foot diameter sphere of fire appears in an unoccupied space. Any creature that ends its turn within five feet of the sphere must make a dexterity saving throw. The creature takes 2d6 fire damage on a fail and half on a success. As a bonus action, you can move the sphere up to 30 feet. I had the perfect size styrofoam ball to start with on this one. You can buy these in various sizes from craft stores or places like Dollarama. I've got a collection that I don't use often, but they sure do come in handy when I need one. I created a handle with a toothpick and set to work coating the whole ball in a layer of hot glue. I then used a glass jar to create a strip of flames. This was done by placing a thick bead of hot glue around the bottom, then teasing the hot glue up with the tip of the glue gun into flame-like shapes. I'd never done this before on glass but decided to give it a try. It didn't remove as easily as I would have hoped and because I had applied the glue pretty thin it actually ripped. It may have been easier just to do this on flat parchment. It was still usable though and I wrapped it around the sphere and attached it. This gave a more three-dimensional flame look than if I had just tried to sculpt the flames right on the sphere itself. I added more hot glue at the seam then using the glue gun tip and a toothpick I sculpted more flame shapes to blend everything together. In order to make this item playable though, I had to cut off a portion of the bottom and attach it to a thin one inch base. This would stop it from rolling around on the table. Again, I hid and sculpted the seam using some hot glue. I spray primed it with a flat white primer as painting directly onto hot glue doesn't tend to stick very well or cover very good. When painting flames, it is also easiest to work from a white base. You want to cover the entire piece with a solid coat of yellow and work your way up to the orange and the red, each time focusing on the highest points and using less paint. This is one of those rare situations where the dry brushing of colors and tones goes in reverse order from lightest to darkest. This is one of my favorites from the group, and you could easily make a bunch of them in a few hours. All of the steps could also be transferred to other shapes to create things like flame walls or just regular campfires. Magic Circle. You create a 10 foot radius, 20 foot tall cylinder of magical energy. Glowing runes appear wherever the cylinder intersects with the floor or other surfaces. There are several spells with a 10 foot radius circle in 5e. That translates to a four inch diameter circle in terms of terrain. And it turns out a two liter bottle of pop is exactly the right size. So I removed the label and cut one down to four inches tall to get the appropriate height. I actually would have just left this clear, maybe adding some pearlescent paint to give it a magical look, but it would be pretty boring that way and it wouldn't hide the pesky bit of label that I just couldn't get off. I decided to cut the top to look a bit like flames and coat the whole thing in hot glue. I tried out the larger glue gun I got with one of the alternate tips. This covered more quickly than the small one and it let me sculpt the glue more easily. But even with the gun on low temperature, that much hot glue will distort thin plastic. This didn't really bother me too much as it gave the whole thing a more organic shape, but it did slightly compromise the perfect circle. I decided I wanted this thing to have a green magical color, so I mixed some lime green acrylic paint with a bit of gloss Mod Podge to help it bond. I also mixed in some pearlescent medium to give it some sparkle. This looked not great. I tried to add a contrasting pink color, again with some pearl mixed into the base. The idea was to fade it into the green, but because the green was still wet, it just blended into each other and made a bit of a muddy color. After a few coats, it started to look a little bit better, and I added a full coat of pearlescent medium over the whole thing 
hoping to save the questionable appearance. I quickly painted on some magical runes on the base as mentioned in the handbook. I did this with a dark contrasting purple that I highlighted with hot pink. I'll be honest, I wasn't thrilled with how this one was turning out, so by the end of it I got kind of frustrated and lost interest. Once I put it on some terrain though, it actually looked pretty cool and I think it will make for a great effect in game. Cloud of Daggers. You fill the air with spinning daggers in a five foot cube. A creature takes 44 slashing damage when it enters the spell's area for the first time or starts its turn there. Maybe it's just the groups that I play in, but this seems to be one of the most used spells and we always need something to represent it. And usually we end up just using the bottom of a Chessex dice box. I started with a one inch square of medium weight chipboard. I also cut out a one inch square of foam core and attached the two together. To hide the edge, I cut and applied strips of black paper. This perfectly represents the footprint of the spell and will still allow for the average one inch miniature base to stand on it. I needed some sort of backing for the spinning daggers, so I cut up some pieces of the packaging from the glue guns and attached them to the base. I kept these a little low so that they didn't interfere with the arms or weapons of miniatures. And for the daggers, I painted out the tips of some toothpicks. Using some actual miniature daggers from models would look way better, but I wanted to keep this thing simple, cheap, and accessible. After cutting off the tips of the toothpicks, it was just a matter of applying a very thin coating of hot glue to the plastic and embedding the little dagger pieces randomly, being very careful not to apply too much hot glue and totally melt that thin plastic. I also sprayed the whole thing with a coat of gloss varnish and this made the hot glue and the plastic look a lot more translucent. This is easily my favorite of the bunch because it's going to be the most practical and I think it represents the spell perfectly. It ain't pretty, but it does its job and that's what matters for these types of pieces. That's it. Five easy spell effects done that you can bang out in an afternoon. Obviously, you could take some of these techniques and apply them to the spells that you need or maybe even just to some regular terrain. You could put in a bit more effort and make them look really, really nice, but I'd advise only doing that for spells that your players use a lot. If one of your players has a spell that they love and they bring out once or twice every single game, then by all means, put some more effort into making a really fancy version of it. I hope that you like this video. Video. If you did, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. If you want to pick up any tools or supplies for your hobby needs, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I list all of the stuff that I use regularly and link to it so you can get the correct items. I am going to update my hot glue gun links to these Surebonder glue guns because these are the ones that I'm going to be using from here on out. Thanks again for Surebonder for sending me these and sponsoring this video. It really helps me to be able to make these videos, but sponsors alone are not enough. The main way this channel is funded is by viewer support via Patreon. So if you really like what I do, you get a lot of value out of it, consider supporting on Patreon. That's it for this week, guys. I will see you again next week. Cheers.